If I asked you to name the most iconic character in The Sims franchise, most of you would probably say Bella Goth. And you'd be right. Everyone knows that Bella Goth is the unofficial queen of The Sims. But despite her glamorous exterior and wealthy husband, life hasn't been too good for our Bella. In this video, I'll be taking you through the whole life story of Bella Goth and how she became the center of the biggest unsolved mystery in The Sims. We first meet Bella Goth in The Sims 1. She's wearing her now signature red dress and is married to Mortimer Goth. Bella and Mortimer have one child, a daughter named Cassandra, and they live at number five Sim Lane. Personality-wise, Sims 1 Bella enjoys reading, playing chess, feeding the fish, and her star sign is Cancer. Michael Batchelor, Bella's brother, is also in the world, although there isn't really any explicit reference to their relation in the first game. He is in the family bin, but he's treated as a separate household and family to the Goths altogether. Bella Goth in The Sims 1 is pretty vague. There isn't really any sign at this point that she would become the centre of the biggest mystery in The Sims games. So quickly moving on then to where it gets a lot more interesting. The Sims 2 is based 25 years after The Sims 1 and boy, has a lot changed. Bella and Mortimer had a second child, Alexander, but you'd only know this by checking the family tree because guess what? Bella's missing. So here's what we know. The Sims 2 saw the introduction of ladies man and total player Don Lothario. Don is engaged to Cassandra Goth in the beginning of the game, although if you play in his household it's pretty clear that he isn't very committed. Whilst being engaged to Cassandra, he is also bumping uglies with a local maid, the next door neighbour, Dina Caliante, and get this, he's banging Dina's sister too. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this game was the inspiration for Love Island. Prior to the actual start of the game though, shortly after Don moves into Pleasant View, he for some reason is visited by none other than Bella Goth. The last place Bella was seen was at Don Lothario's house. She was on the rooftop with him when he tried putting it on her and she turned him down. This is the same guy currently engaged to Bella's daughter. Yep, this is a guy that is not put off by an awkward family reunion. It does look, however, like his unsuccessful encounter with Bella happened before he got with Cassandra. It was also suggested in the game that it was at Don Lothario's house that Bella was abducted by aliens. Apart from the brief stories with the worlds, the information here is on you as the player to gather by investigating the memories of townies and just finding nuggets of information scattered around the game. If you play as the goth family and investigate their memories, you can see that child sim Alexander does not have the memory of Bella being abducted but Mortimer and Cassandra do, so he could have only been a baby when this happened. Interestingly though, when looking at their memories, Cassandra has a negative memory of her mother going missing. Go figure, I would too. Meaning it clearly caused her much upset. But Mortimer, on the other hand, remembers Bella's disappearance, but actually has a positive memory of this. Eh, almost as if it was planned, wasn't it Mortimer? Despite Bella being missing from Pleasant View, the game suggests that she can be found in the alternate world of Strangetown, a world known for paranormal activity, specifically alien encounters. If you wander around Strangetown long enough, you will probably bump into a version of Bella Goth. I say version because if you look at the face of Strangetown Bella Goth, she looks completely different to Bella Goth from Pleasant View, which is the Bella Goth that went missing. Some believe that Strangetown Bella is a clone. However, there is a chance that this is the real Bella and the difference in appearance is just an oversight from the creators. But oversight or not, there are still two versions of Bella Goth in the game. Pleasant View Bella is hidden within the game and was given an I am dead token, basically making her an unspawnable NPC. You can, however, use cheats or third-party applications to remove the dead token and bring her back into the game. 
Both versions of Belagoth have no memories, hinting that her memory was wiped during her abduction. Something else that happens is that Dina and Nina Caliente are introduced into the game. If you look at the family tree, Dina is shown as married to deceased Michael Batchelor, Bella's brother. Usually in the family tree, Sims are separated when a spouse dies, and they're connected only by their children. However, a decision was made to show these as married anyway, despite not having any children together. I guess The Sims 2 was making a point. Dina has the money aspiration and quickly moves on to Mortimer immediately after Bella's disappearance. And just in case you didn't spot it, this is the same Dina that's having an affair with Don Lothario, despite his engagement to Cassandra Goth. With Mortimer also not seeing Bella's abduction as a bad thing, he's all too keen to get it on with Dina. When Bella is seen in Strange Town, she's not wearing a wedding ring, and also in the family tree, Bella is shown in colour, meaning she is alive, but is no longer married to Mortimer, suggesting they could be divorced. If you do use cheats to bring the original Bella back, she does have a relationship with her children, but also she has a negative attraction towards Mortimer, which could be an indication of maybe a bitter split. Or perhaps just another oversight. If you play as her in the game, however, she and Mortimer, they don't get on. It's clear that their relationship has seen some hard times. It may or may not be worth noting as well that the Caliente sisters are part alien, which seems pretty suspicious that they move to Pleasant View and then the spouse of a wealthy Sim suddenly goes missing, and then one of them gets a rich husband. I don't know, call me suspicious, it's all just a little bit fish. Oh, and as a side note, it's believed that after The Sims 1 and prior to The Sims 2, Mortimer created a youth serum, which was used on Bella, which I guess makes logical sense, because in The Sims 2, Bella is shown as much younger than Mortimer, despite being childhood sweethearts. It also makes sense with his job, he starts as a test subject in the science career in the first Sims game, and by The Sims 2, he progressed his career through to Mad Scientist. So, the idea that he would create a youth serum and test it out on his wife is pretty plausible. In terms of what really happened to Bella, some believe that Bella was murdered and her death was orchestrated by the Caliente sisters, with the help of their alien relatives and possibly Don Lothario. This theory is unlikely though, because Bella's icon in the family tree is in colour, and deceased sims usually appear in black and white, so it looks like wherever she is, she is alive. It is possible though that the Caliente sisters did have something to do with Bella's disappearance. The game also seems to tease this theory, what with the story at the start referencing their move to the town, plus you've got their connection with aliens, and also the relationship between Dina and Mortimer. There are also a few small reminders of Bella's disappearance in the game. There's the Bella Squared painting that can be purchased in the Build and Buy catalogue. Rumour has it that if you hang the painting in your home in Strange Town, Bella will just turn up to your lot. Although I personally haven't experienced this, so I don't know how true that is. There's also Bella's face on milk cartons and a figure standing in a hot air balloon that looks like Bella. Now, you could argue that we're just looking for Bella everywhere, but considering the emphasis put on Bella's distinct look, the dark hair and red dress, it's hard to believe that this was an accident. So, timeline in a nutshell. After The Sims 1, Bella and Mortimer have another baby, Alexander. Bella's sister-in-law, Dina Caliente, moves to Pleasant View with her sister, Nina, after Bella's brother, Michael, dies. Not long after the sisters arrive, Bella goes to Don Lothario's house. Don tries it on with Bella, she turns him down, and then mysteriously disappears. She was abducted by aliens, which her husband Mortimer wasn't too upset about. He then moves on swiftly with Bella's sister-in-law, Dina, who is part alien, and Bella's disappearance continues to be a mystery. So along comes The Sims 3. In Pleasant View, we've taken a big step back in time as Bella is now just a child and therefore has her maiden name, Bachelor. She lives with her parents and her brother, Michael. 
She's best friends with fellow child Mortimer Goth. Her favourite colour is red, and there are lots of references in her exterior and bedroom decor of her fascination with the supernatural and just general gothic style. Child Bella has a bit more personality than the memory wiped Bella in The Sims 2. She's a grade B student at elementary school. Her traits are brave, good, and lucky. Eh, funny. But generally though, life is good for Bella in The Sims 3. But then, things take a sinister turn. In the downloadable extra world of Luna Lakes, which is a world set in space in a later timeline, there's a large gravestone. And who does that grave belong to? Bella Goth. Although her picture on the grave looks nothing like Bella Goth, pale, blonde, and haggard, it is in line with the aesthetic of the other sims in this world, so it's possible that living here just turned her this way. According to the game, she died of old age. Oh, there's also a female sim in Luna Lakes called Matilda Goth, who is believed to be related to Bella Goth. After a little digging, I believe that she is Mortimer Goth's older sister, apparently. There was originally a theory that she could have been the third child of Bella and Mortimer, and Bella was pregnant with her when she was abducted, but to me that doesn't appear to be the case. It has been officially confirmed though that the deceased Bella in Luna Lakes is the same Bella that has been the centre of the biggest mystery in The Sims. And whilst we do know that she is dead, the saddest part is that we don't know if she was ever found or ever reunited with her husband and children. In The Sims 4, the Goth family live in Ophelia Villa in Willow Creek, and Bella is there. Mortimer and Bella are both still married, Cassandra is there, and Alexander is too. All seems well in The Sims 4, one whole happy family. And that's because The Sims 4 has been set in an alternate reality, and so Basically, everything we have of the Goth family in this game can't really be considered when it comes to the story of Bella Goth and the mystery that surrounds her. But there is a fan theory that I came across that adds a little sweetener to the bitter ending of Bella's story. Before I go into it, I believe this theory belongs to Alex Plays Sims, so make sure you go on their page and read the full thing. I'll leave the link in the video description. So here we go. In The Sims 3, there are two books that appear to be about Bella Goth. There is the children's book, Where's Bella? And also another book called Murder in Pleasant View. And that book was written by Alexander Goth, the child son of Bella and Mortimer. But how could Alexander Goth have written that book when he wasn't even born yet in The Sims 3? Well, I'll tell you how. In both The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, there was an option to build a time machine. At some point after The Sims 2, Alexander Goth travelled back in time and changed history by writing the book about his mother's disappearance slash death which turned out to be a bestseller and therefore rewrote the events that would have taken place in years to come. The theory suggests that Alexander Goth either knew more than what was let on in The Sims 2, or more likely he learned the truth about his mother's disappearance when he got older, prompting him to go back in time and save her. Now, you could argue that this theory is a bit far-fetched, However, it does tie in The Sims 4 with the story. Because if it was true, and his time travel meant that those events never happened, and Bella was never abducted, then it is possible that the way the Goth family are presented in The Sims 4 is really how things played out after history was changed. One factor going against this theory though is the fact that it has already been confirmed that The Sims 4 does not fit into the storyline. So I guess the only way to find out whether this is true is by waiting for the next piece of the puzzle, if it ever comes.